So much of the Nissan Renault story now has been taken up by the fascination of Carlos Ghosn's yes. escape from the Japanese legal system. But there are still businesses that need to be run, and the alliance is not so strong right now. That's right. Uh, as you said, a lot of dysfunction, uh, I think, since Ghosn. And actually, some even before uh, Ghosn was arrested, there, was, there were many in Nissan who were obviously unhappy with these yeah. sort of the closer ties that were being forged under Ghosn. Um, I think what's interesting is, look, as we reported, Nissan are obviously looking at potentially pulling out of the alliance or moving further out of the alliance uh, and have some contingency plan. It's very unclear to me what, if anything, they could do to action that, because this is not just an alliance of Carlos Ghosn's imagination. It's a very, very tightly legally structured alliance. Uh, and as far as I understand it, it's impossible for either side to take unilateral action. So his legacy persists. But if Nissan had its way, what would a Nissan look like without Renault? I think a lot less strong, inevitably. Um, it's also unclear that there is such a thing as a Nissan without Renault because these two companies are so closely integrated. It's not just a question of like, we'll have some shared sales in some region and, and another. It's actually, they for years, they've been integrating more and more and more sort of incrementally. So how do you unwind that? It's not immediately clear that there is a sort of a standalone for either company. Mm. And then you take the fact that you also have Mitsubishi as part of this alliance and you know, it's a, it's a difficult one to unpick. If they were to be standalone, I'm sure they would get ample support from the Japanese government. So is there any, I mean, we saw the, the shares of Nissan, they're down 30% last year. It's pretty brutal. Although, to be fair, lots of car company stocks these yep. days look pretty bad. Does anyone have any new ideas for anything positive? Uh, well, Elon Musk, obviously. Right. I mean, Tesla passed 500 I mean, today, right? Ex so. ex -Tesla. <laughs> ex -Tesla. Does anyone have any ideas for these companies? Well, look, I think w one of the big topics we're seeing among the automakers is more integration. We right. saw, you know, we've seen that in Europe with the Fiat Peugeot deal. We're seeing conversations happening between all the big automakers in terms of do they just do more sharing? Uh, do they do some sort of more proper uh, M&A to try and bring these together? So this idea of if you push Nissan Renault further apart, they're going to be better off. I'm not sure that is true from a corporate point of view, it may be better from a political point of view. It certainly may be better from a reputational point of view for Nissan, because they obviously are saying, look, they didn't like what Mr. Gohm was doing. And so if that's the case, then you have to go against his legacy. Right. And his legacy was full integration. All right. As Nissan and Renault look to separate, you have Woodward and Hexel combining. And this is basically Boeing suppliers coming together. Does it have anything is to there, do with these the aren't household names, are they, No, so. <laughs> no. Uh, it does, it, you know, it does have a bit to do with, with Boeing. I think the whole industry is going through a bit of a reimagination in terms of should it consolidate. There have also been some other big deals in the space. U U UTX uh, Raytheon last year was obviously the, the, the mega one. Um, and I think other defense contractors are looking at this and saying, well, what do we have to do? And the market likes it. I mean, look, shares are up 10% uh, in uh, Hexel and just over 5% in Woodward. So clearly this is an MOE that the market is not looking at and saying, well, one is getting a better deal than the other.